Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka with Rural Heritage on RFD TV. Today we're outside of Georgetown, Ohio with Mike Vogel at his farm and Mike is going to show us his wagon collection and other machines and horse-drawn vehicles that he's been restoring over the years. Mike, how long have you been doing this kind of work? Oh, I would say five to ten years okay. in that neighborhood. What got you interested in doing it? How did you get started? Well, I when I got out, growing up I didn't have, I wasn't around horses. We had a couple riding horses, that was all. And my dad had grown up with work horses. And uh, when I got out of the army, my dad had gotten back into it and was raising Belgians and, and working them and going to different events with them. And so I got into it then. And uh, had the had team a couple teams over several years, and gradually kind of got away from the horses. Ended up selling them, but I loved the wagons, so I uh, kind of got into restoring those, and and that's kind of how it got started. So I got rid of the horses and kept the wagons and started working on them. How do you find the the pieces that you work on? Most of them been on the internet. Okay. I, uh, Found them, and, and interestingly, most of them I have came from northern Ohio, fairly okay. close by, and uh, and uh, most of them were pretty much basket cases. But I want I look for ones I don't pay much attention to the body as long as all the parts are there, but the wheels have to be good, and because that's where you get into a lot of money is replacing wheels. And we don't have anybody around here that that works on wheels. I have to take them up to uh, Holmes County up in that area to get fixed. So so. And you don't want to start doing wheel riding? No, everybody keeps telling me I should, but uh, that's a, you know, I'm, a, I'm 67, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sure you could do it, but once you start doing it, you're going to have, it's like when somebody buys a semi to haul their own stuff, they end up having people calling them all the time to haul their stuff, or yeah, a, a, that's true. A, a, a log truck or something. Yeah. Um, as soon as you start doing, they know that you're working on wheels, you'll get a bunch right. of them showing up. And that's something I, I haven't had the desire to do other people's stuff. I just do it for myself and I, I can't sell them. I have them all displayed out here. And I have done, made some breaks and things for people to kind of usually trade for welding work because I don't okay. weld either. But sure, sure. Okay. I have another friend that restores equipment and he's a welder. Okay. So we kind of, he doesn't like to do woodwork and I kind of, we kind of switch back and forth. So Now would probably be a good time to start walking around and looking all at right. the stuff. Sounds good. Yeah, it shops in here. All right. Those are all the uh, parts for the bed that uh, they've all been ready to go. And, and uh, I'm, I'm right now just putting everything together. So everything's been taken apart, fixed, and painted. And, well, except for the wood. But, uh, and these uh -huh. are, I told you the research, my research where I found different. Uh, the brown is the first one I did. And... Uh, so, and even drawings for things that I had made. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And this is my uh, before and book? after book. Oh. Okay. All the wagons I've done uh, before and after. That's actually well, that's my first wagon I did was that one. And uh, that's beautiful. And, uh, so oh, that's gorgeous. So was, Brown was the manufacturer. Right. Yeah. This is the Troy. This this is the one that uh, is my favorite. That. Uh, and it's, uh, we'll see when we go out there, it has auto steering on it instead of the, I don't know if you've seen those before. It's the only one I've ever seen. I don't but, know if uh, I have or not. Okay. If I it had, steers, I'd forgotten it. steers like a car. The okay. wheels turn. Gotcha. Like right, that. right, and, uh, right. So, and, and I do have a chuck wagon that I made. Wow. And, well, you don't fool around. Uh, it's so this a, is the gear for the chuck right, wagon? That's a Staunton gear. That's a wagon I got from a, uh, a Mennonite that moved in here from Pennsylvania and brought this wagon with him. And uh, it was in his road, so he decided he wanted to sell it, so I bought it. And uh, 
That's a before and after. It doesn't look a whole lot different. All no. I've done is replaced sure. different things, the bed and the different things. Well, it was serviceable mostly when you got it. It wasn't too just... bad. It, the floor was was in pretty bad shape. and and uh, Wow. It's a Pennsylvania freight wagon. Wow. That, uh, that can take some weight. Wow. And that's the one that I'm working on now. That's, that's what I started with. That's, at that view is pretty nice, and basically all I'm replacing is the the, the bottom board, board and the bed. Uh -huh. but, uh, the top will be the same. But, uh, so will you paint that one eventually when you're yeah, done? Yeah, I'm going to have to paint it. Uh -huh. but, uh, so the wood will match because you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Sure. Okay. And uh, so it's in here. Oh wow. But these, uh, the gear's done, and as you see, I didn't paint it. I just cleaned it up and uh, put oil on it and, uh, and then a lacquer on, on over top of that. And the two wheels are up in Coshocton County getting fixed by Stutzman's wheel shop. I think I replaced the, the reach or the coupling. We call them coupling poles around here. Okay. But, uh, a lot of people call them reaches and, and the brake pads. And it's pretty much all I had. I had to fix one of the one of these back here but, uh, it is interesting back. how terms change depending yeah. on your, the region you're in yeah i've heard people talk about things i think what is that i've never heard of that and then yeah. i finally realized it's something that I, we just call by a different name so this would have been created on a forge uh I, yeah i'd say it was the way it, yeah, i think so yeah, it certainly was that is a beautiful piece but the older ones are all pretty much all forge work yeah, that is gorgeous. This has a, uh, it's set up to run a chain from here through this up to your second team, your second team. Yep. Uh, and I've so never they're had not one pulling like on that. the pole, they're pulling on the wagon. Right. Yeah. I've never nice. had one like that. We, I've never set them up that way. Uh -huh. uh, around here, we always just put a double, another double tree on the end of the tongue is the way right. we've always done it. Over here, we have the under pinnings on the, the new floor I'm going to put in. They're all ready to go. Is this the original wood that you've just been working this on? This is. Some, yeah. Everything else is new. I see. And then we have uh, the boards for the bed are all ready to go. I got to do another coat of paint on those. And, uh, but they're ready to go. I, my paint shop is uh, outside or in the driveway of the barn and it hasn't been painting weather lately. So right. I haven't been able to do much paint. It's very nice. How do you clean it? What do you are you using? I usually I usually use just a sander. Okay. Well, this that's what I did. Now, the spreader we'll look at in a minute that has a lot of the writing visible. I'm going to just wash that off. I'm not going to sand it, but uh, save as much as I can. But uh, yeah. That iron, uh, do you do you put it in a tumbler to clean it before you paint it, or do you sand sandblast it, the, or? The big pieces I use a, a grinder, a oh, right. wire brush okay. grinder on. The little ones I have this sand blaster here I okay. use for those. But, uh, the big, the, a lot of stuff I can't get in there. And of course. Some of the bigger stuff takes, it doesn't, it takes a while, so it's quicker to do it with a brush. But, uh. We now have four volumes of America's Rural Yesterday books with photos of farm life a hundred years ago. Field work has images of horses in the fields working the ground, planting, and harvesting the crop. Barn and Farmyard shows farmers putting that crop in the barn, silo, or corn crib and caring for poultry, hogs, cattle, and more. In At Home and in Town, farm families prepare Sunday dinner, relax in the parlor, drive to town by buggy or wagon, and visit the general store. Finally, Early Tractors has over 250 photos of early American tractors like Alice Chalmers, Oliver, John Deere, Farmall, Minneapolis Moline, and many more. These photos are of new tractors back in the day and show how they were configured coming out of the factory. Buy any of these books for $24.95 plus shipping. When you buy two or more, the price per book goes down all the way to $17.49 per book when you buy all four. To order, just call 1-877-647-2452 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. That's 877-647-2452. When I got out of the Army, uh, Dad had already gotten back into raising Belgians and, and working them and going to parades and things. So he gave me a, a stud colt. I bought another one from a neighbor and I got into it. Okay. 
And when I got them going, I didn't have a wagon, so Dad made me a wagon and uh, gave it to me, and we used that for years. And uh, he had bought this wagon probably 40 years ago, I imagine. And uh, it was a great running gear. The bed was in pretty bad shape, but it was up in his barn, and Dad had, had restored some wagons years ago. So that's what he was going to do. And I always had my eye on it because it's so big. I thought I'd like to fix that up. So when I got into this, I, uh, I told Dad I'd trade him back the wagon he made for me for this wagon gear. And uh, so he did, and uh, it stayed down here for another 10 years until I got into it. And uh, that was the first one I ended up restoring. So obviously the whole thing has been painted. And, uh, it's got springs on the state chains. Is that common? Yeah. That's uh, in fact, see that right there often? are the ones that go on the wagon that I'm doing in the barn now. Oh, okay. In the shop now. That's a, a That's unique thing for the brown wagons. Okay. And, uh, That's interesting. The other unique. Uh, so it doesn't it doesn't jar as much when right. they just a little give. And the yeah. other thing unique on a brown are these hangers on the seat. This is the one for the wagon I'm working on, and that's the one up there has them also. So. And so what would you hang from that? Well, they fit into this piece here. Browns, that's another way to identify a brown is this thing here, and they fit into that. Okay. It's just a different way of making it. Okay. You see, they have them on all levels if you take a wow. level off. To prevent it from moving at all. Yeah. And most, most browns, well, browns have these, but I have seen this on other wagons as well. To yeah. lock down the sides right. as you add panels. Yeah. Yeah, that's a heavy duty running gear. It's a big one. Yes, sir. And so what is the number on that plate? Yeah, it's a number, th it would be, it's a number three, three where that one was a number one. Yeah. Okay. And then this was the second one I did. It's a Troy, I made in Troy, Ohio. And, uh, it's the one I showed you earlier. I found the color scheme for it. And uh, so I knew exactly how to paint it. Uh, I would never have painted this gray if I hadn't found that. But uh, I think it's a nice touch. Right, right. But, uh, and it has the auto steer. It's, oh, sure. See, the, the wheels move independently. They, they don't, the whole axle doesn't move, just the wheels. The, the reasoning the company gave for that which makes sense is if you've ever driven horses across rough ground like plowed ground or something, the wagon tongue will snap back and forth and hit them. You've seen that before. Of course. With this, that doesn't happen. Sure. But my question is, why aren't these more popular? You know, it must right. not have worked. Right, must, right. Because this is the only one I've seen. I know there's more out there. But uh, I bought this in northern Ohio from a fella. I found it on the Internet and uh, went up to get it. And... Uh, the guy told me that uh, when he got married, uh, if his wife hadn't died, they would have had their 50th wedding anniversary. And he got it as a wedding present when they got married. And he said, I got it from a neighbor and I put it in the barn and it's never been out. Wow. And uh, I know when I pulled out with it, he was bawling his eyes out. Yeah. He was, got very emotional about it. So yeah. I, when I got it finished, I sent him pictures of it and everything. And, uh, and he always said he would come down to see it, but I, I don't know. He may have passed since then. I don't know. But he never did come. He was very attached to it. Yeah. So there's little spots of gray all over. Yeah. And is this is a spring here? Yeah, it has springs in there. Is that it's, uh, it's kind fairly of unique? unique? I've, yeah, I've never seen it on another wagon. Wow. The, Neither have I. Huh. There's something where they're trying to figure out something better. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. It, it does look to me like this is a weak area here. Yep. Because it's so thin. I don't know if they had trouble with that maybe. I don't know. Right. But sitting in a barn, it did just fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the picture I found that it was colorized. Wow that took all the mystery out of how to stripe it and everything. Wow. That's terrific. And it also, um, 
on the spreaders you see this a lot, but this one had a seat that would tip up. Oh yeah, like yeah. A, like on a spreader. This one, uh, it's a Lansing, it was made in Lansing, Michigan. And I'd kind of gotten on the, I kind of had it in my mind to just do Ohio wagons because the first two were Ohio wagons. And then I ended up finding this one. It was at a, uh, I think it was basically a riding stable and they had a, like a hall they rented out for people to have parties. And this wagon was in there and it, it was in bad shape also. And uh, so I bought it and uh, totally restored it as well. And uh, so it was kind of a, a playground piece, probably. Kind yeah, of. yeah. And people uh, climbing on and getting their picture taken, yeah, stuff like that. I, uh, I sent her a picture after I finished it and she said, well, I'd like to have it back. <laughs> <laughs> I really like I. Uh, it's kind of a challenge on the all the uh, pinstriping work on it. I. Yeah. The, right. You did a good job. This is the first one where I learned to use a pinstriper. I, I had taped all the others. Okay. And I learned to uh, use the pinstriper on those. Okay. You collect wagon jacks. Yeah. I, I, Axle jacks. Point, every time I find a, one I've not seen before, I get it. Yeah. There are two. They made a lot of different kinds. Yeah. They're interesting also. Right. This was my harness when I had horses. Yeah. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka of Rural Heritage Magazine. I'm on location of one of the many events we cover that celebrates our rural heritage. If you enjoy our show, check out our magazine, where you'll learn more about the people that blend the past with what works today. You can save almost 20% off the newsstand price by subscribing at RuralHeritage.com or chat with us at 877-647-2452. That's toll free, 877-647-2452. So this one was a, a fun one to do. And uh, it uh, was sold at an auction this side of Columbus up there. And, uh, I went out, or uh, it was a two-day auction. I went out, I spotted it on the first day, and went up the second day to buy it. And uh, and then I ended up. That's where that came. The spreader came from. I'll tell you about it later. Okay. That uh, uh, I ended up with the spreader too. And, uh, but uh, I found the several pictures of these, and they didn't didn't have seats. They were usually just loaded with with stuff. Uh, stuff. And one guy would ride on the wheel horse, left the lead wheel horse, and the other guy would ride back here. No kidding. He would either sit there. I've seen some pictures of him standing. Okay. This, and he had access to the brake. This is the original wood. Yep. I, I had to replace the bottom level and the floor. The top, all this is original. Is it banged up on the inside? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I hear stories about wagons like this they're, they're always carrying something they're rarely mm -hmm. deadheading so they right. might be carrying goods to one place and then freighting rock or something or whatever coal right. or something else to another place I've, I've been told this probably ran from the east coast to pittsburgh just basically like our wow. semis today now i can't say for sure but i think my next project was the chuck wagon it uh it's on a stotton gear and uh Pretty much everything else was built. Uh, give Doug a plug here. His calendar looks an awful lot like this chuck wagon does. <laughs> That's pretty much what I went by. And, uh, I had... Uh, this is your blacksmith's friend work. No, those yeah. I actually bought somewhere. But now okay, about okay. everything else, these, you know, everything else on here is. Okay. Now these came from Doug. Did uh, they? And, okay. And, uh, yep. And uh, we yeah, can they... open it up there. Yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It, uh, 
and a lot of fun finding the parts to go on it. it uh, we've been to many a uh, flea market and stuff to get all these parts for it. Wow. And, uh, and there is a lot to look at here. This is the flag, American flag okay. they all have. That, um, that tarp underneath, that's not to carry firewood that you see as you go along, is it? That's what they're for. They call okay. them possum bellies. Okay. And uh, that or buffalo chips, right, whatever that's what they I was start that would do, use yeah. on a fire. Okay, yeah. And, uh, it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, you're ready for just about everything. Mm -hmm. Just need your Winchester in the sheath. It's in, in the, the house. In the, okay. yeah. I do have one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. There's a lot to look at on this. It's beautiful. This wagon is the one that came from a local Mennonite that brought it from Pennsylvania and uh, decided it was in his way, so he wanted to get rid of it. And, and I've left this one, I had to replace a lot on this one, but I've left everything that didn't paint it or anything. And you can see what was replaced. So you kept this, but yeah, replaced but, that. Right. That's a beautiful yeah. job. It's got that brake in the back too. Yeah, and this is the, the one where the, the front brake and the back brake operate it. You can use either one. You don't have to get rid of one to use the other one. Huh. It's really fascinating how they designed it. Now I don't, I don't think this is the original board. This was a different color than of the green. other side boards. Okay. Uh, I don't think it was the original one, but it, it stayed with it. You did a great job. It was different. I, I enjoyed it. This was very different than anything I'd ever done before. The bed just keeps coming forward. Yeah, they just the step. Bit. Well, actually, it tilts up. Yeah, it does. Angle, right. Which was different. Than... So you have to bend it. No, I, oh, I joined it. I got you. Yeah. Okay, sure. Okay. And I had to replace the hounds, they were in bad shape. And then I had never heard of a wagon tongue vise until a while back, and then I found one and, and fixed it up and put it on here. But that was pretty interesting. Yeah, but, uh, I've never heard of that. But it probably came in handy out on the, on the trail, or even in your shop. Right. <coughs> huh. It's a beauty. That's all the time we have for today. We'll be back with Mike in another episode to talk about the very unique antique manure spreaders in his collection. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.com ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.